There once was discovered a land where freedom flowed like a clear, refreshing stream. Word of this wondrous stream spread to places where the currents of freedom were weak and dying. Many who heard of the river longed to come and live in this new land, to refresh themselves in this stream, for they knew that the power of freedom was great, that it would renew their hope and replenish their energy. So they came and tasted the waters of freedom were refreshed. And they said, here is the greatness of this land. So long as this stream flows strong and clear, our people will be filled with life and hope. Our land will bring forth a vigorous and abundant life. But if these waters cease to flow or lose their clarity, our land will decay and die. The new land prospered. The people tilled the soil and built great cities. Remarkable inventions and new ideas made life rich and joyous in this land of freedom. The people became content. How good to live in this most favored land. They grew proud. How well our hands have cultivated and built. Their pride grew and grew. They did not know that too much pride could blind them. They did not know that too much pride could make them arrogant, foolish. And so it happened that because they so coveted the river, they barred from it people who looked unfamiliar or talked differently in the false belief that strangers were not deserving. Little remembering that not long ago, they too were strangers. When new ideas were proposed, the people ridiculed them, for they were now afraid to change the old ways. When some among them arose and selfishly took more than their share, the people did not stop them, but instead resolved to do the same. Instead of helping those who were ill and weak, they despised them and chastised them for their idleness. When a wise man stood up and said, look, the waters are beclouding. They could not see it, for their pride made them blind. And when he tried again to make them see, they shut him up. For his vision infuriated them. How could they act differently? They loved the stream as they remembered it, fresh and clear, and could not bear to look upon its decay. When the children, unblinded by old recollection, saw it too, they cried out. But their fathers called them ungrateful and punished them. And even as the river grew weak and muddy, glib leaders said it was strong and clear and must be sent to certain deserving lands. And the people believed them and allowed their precious little fluid to be spilled upon alien soil. The people, feeling their hopes dying and their energy waning, finally looked at the river. They saw it was wasted and stagnant. The spirit of despair was great in the land. The people became confused. They did not know what to do. In the darkness of that hour, they heard many voices. Some said, The river is a nuisance and only lowers efficiency. Too much freedom causes disorder. The people are not ready for the river of freedom. Perhaps later. We will stop the river and start it again. 
wanted to sing it. But other voices said, let us work to make the waters of freedom flow fresh and strong again. Where it has been fouled by our foolishness, it can be made clear by our wisdom. Where it has grown stagnant from our neglect, it can be kept fresh by our vigilance. And the people listening said, the life or death of the river of freedom is in our hands.